Clay Henry also has that uh, fiber internet, although he's on the phone today. Uh, so, Clay, what's going on today? What brings you into town? Uh, we've got the uh, Hogs Illustrated Sports Club luncheon. And I never thought I would uh, have a sports club. How's that? <laughs> Well, it's what this show is every day. So you join the club, you know, at least yeah. once, once yeah. a week. I mean, that means you get to get up. Like you're a print, you're a print and radio person. You know, when it's folks like us that have to get in front of people up on a stage, speaking to them with all the eyes on them. <laughs> that's when things change a little bit. How are you in front of a crowd? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. And this is thirty years for Hogs Australia, and the guy that kind of got me into this. He said his vision, and I'd never written columns. I'd just been a reporter, uh, beat reporter, and not written commentaries. He says, you're going to write a weekly column in the magazine. You're going to tell people what you think. In other words, I think this, which I didn't really want to do that. Uh, I thought, you know, i let somebody else tell the story, but I'll just be the conduit. And he says, you'll be a speaker. You're going to go to Rotary Clubs. You're going to go to Razorback clubs, you're going to do all this. And uh, most of what he said is has come to pass. He said, you'll do radio shows. I never thought I'd do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this, is, this, this is really weird. He didn't ever predict that I would be accused of being a cult leader. And I got a letter, an email Monday or yesterday from a Texas fan criticizing my column, you know, praising the students for continuing the Texas hate, that uh, when you preach hate, hate will come to your doorstep, Mr. Cult Leader. Uh, so I'm a cult leader. And I, I put that on Facebook, and literally a hundred have said, I'm in your cult. <laughs> Well, congratulations, man. I never knew that you were the sort of person that demanded people to worship you, uh, which kind yeah, of is what so, a cult leader would be. Right. Yeah, Ron Higgins, who's editor of Tiger Rag, which is uh, the LSU publication, he goes, man, I knew it all along, you and Jim Jones. <laughs> Same category, right? Yeah, I've always thought yep. about that. You always frighten me. You've always frightened me, Clay. Well, and Matt Jones says that Clay Henry cult is terrifying. So, anyway. Well, we'll... we'll uh, uh, my introduction, to, uh, I've, I'm... I'm going to tell Hunter Juracek that I really defer to him that he can be the cult leader. Well, that's just fine. And we all know that the real cult is Texas A&M, the entire school and their <laughs> entire deal anyway. So we'll move on to that. <laughs> no week. question. So yeah. looking, back, looking back to the Texas game, and this is what you hope moving forward, of course, with the offensive line, is that they can play that physically and that strong and move that line of scrimmage and, and open up all the holes that they did. But one thing that certainly does seem for certain is that this stable of running backs, and i got to throw K.J. Jefferson into that as well because he is a, a dynamic runner. This group of running backs, I'm not sure if I've ever seen this at Arkansas, and I'm not sure if there might be a better group of running backs that we'll see on the schedule right now. And, I mean, you know, look, you know, you can play in Alabama. Of course, LSU is going to have deep running backs. Man, when you look at this group of backs, Clay, they're all – they all look good. They all have speed, and they all run differently. Yeah, I like them a lot. And, uh, you know, you, you go back to – I do not like the comparison with McFadden, Felix Jones, and Hill. And Stad, that those guys were uh, – in a, and there's really three. Uh, Michael Smith was around that group a little bit too. Um, but, you know, when you think about – I don't know that there's a McFadden in this group. It was just – be honest about that maybe a year from now we can say yeah there, there was we just didn't quite know yet but i don't see a mcfadden in in this group but well, i'll go back to 75 the team that won the cotton bowl and you had scott bull at quarterback big you know six four six five guy that could run and throw a little bit he's he's got some kj jefferson qualities you know big strong fast athlete uh, bigger than quarterbacks of that day in a, in a runner, more of a runner than a passer. And then just listen to this group, Jerry Eckwood, Ike Forte, Michael Forrest, Ben Cowens, and Roland Puch. Roland Puch was really a good one. Uh, kind of, 
you know, tooled in the background, but it's like they they had depth, ability. Some of those guys played in, you know, in the NFL. Jerry Eckwood certainly did. Uh, but they, they all had speed. There was, uh, you know, Forrest is kind of the Rocket Sanders of that group, you know, 230, 225. Uh, Eckwood, 195, 197. A little more Traylon Smithish, so to speak. Um, but, uh, you know, a little bigger than Traylon. But I, that was what I came up with. And it, I've been thinking about it for three days, and that's the the most – or the best comparison that I can come and, you know, say the last 45 years that I've been watching the Razorbacks. Well, it sounds like a good comparison. And to kind of put that type of pressure on anybody in that running back room of, hey, you're going to be the next Aaron McFadden, that, that's a lot of pressure to put on anyone. No, and I didn't want to go there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it, yeah, it's now, just too People much. will do that because Rockets wearing five. People yeah. are going to do that. But uh, I don't see that he's McFadden yet. Uh, you know, it's it, it, these guys are young enough, and the development is. You know, we're we're going to see more in the next, you know, year or two. There's not, you know, much telling. You know, what's going to happen with another year in the weight room, and uh, and the key to all of it is the continued development of the offensive line. Those guys, you know, they they were given cracks, crevices, holes sometimes, and I think the offensive line is just getting started here at Arkansas with Sam Pittman and Cody Kennedy that, you know, some of the young linemen that they're going to redshirt, we're not going to see, you know, I don't know, Tykes Crawford, Terry Wells, and some of these, you know, Marcus Henderson, Jalen St. John, they, they don't need to play these guys this year because of the, you know, the experience they have in front of them, uh, you know, five, six guys that are starters. Uh, I, I consider Limer a starter at this point. Um, but that's where that's where it gets to be fun is when you have an offensive line that, that can that can uh, control the tempo up front, and then you got something with these backs. All right, Clay. I know we got to be kind of strict with our time because you've got to uh, you got to get up and perform in front of people that actually are there in front of you looking at you. <laughs> So, perform uh, is not the right word. Uh, it's still performing. If you're up in, if you're in front of people, man, that's a bit of a performing. A I'm a bit. facilitator. Okay, all right, a moderator, a facilitator, yeah, but definitely not a cult leader, as far as I'm concerned. I just don't, I don't see that out of you. You're too well reasoned, <laughs> so, too thought no. out. Yeah. If I served you Kool Aid, would you drink it? Depends um, on how cool your robes are. If the robes are cool enough, I might join. <laughs> can we get some? Okay, we, I got make, it. Can yeah. we make some Jello shots? Is that a possibility? <laughs> All right, half I time do back. That, yeah. Halftime back after the break. We'll stay here with Clay Henry. Back on halftime. Matty T reminded me, Clay, uh, during the commercial break, uh, Jim Jones used Flavor Aid. So it's, I think maybe our weekly segment with you, we might, tra- we, we, could we just change that into Flavor Aid with Clay Henry once a week? Or follow our cult leader into the pit of hell, I guess. Uh, it's good to be with you here, Clay. Uh, let's get a little more into what Arkansas is going to see Saturday. Um, is it safe to say? that it could end up being the fastest game of the year, being that Arkansas, like Sam Pittman said, if I'm averaging seven yards per carry, I'm never going to throw the ball. And I see a team that runs the triple option, and I'm thinking, hey, we might get out of there in two and a half hours. (laughs) Well, things change. And the reason I say that is uh, when you look at those running backs and see what they did against Texas, uh, if you're the defensive coordinator at Georgia Southern and throughout the year, it's like, all right, we're going we're gonna to make KJ throw. Uh, Texas played two really deep safeties. Their nickel played deep a lot. He, he walked up some. But they played a 4-2 and dared Arkansas to run. They said, we don't think you can block our defensive front, and they did. And Ricky Stromberg, I thought, played great. Bo Limmer, and, you know, both the tackles – you know, were praised by Sam Pittman. So I think what you're going to see is, a, a, you know, Georgia Southern is going to, is going to, they're going to do things that are a little unconventional. I mean, you know, they, you know, you guys have already talked about the option and the discipline that that's required. Um, and you may see a lot of eight-man fronts on both sides. Arkansas may play an eight-man front, bring those safeties up, Jalen Catalan and Greg Brooks, you know, the Greg Brooks for all, 
purposes is is a corner slash safety. Joe Boucher, they'll have those guys in the box to stop the, the triple option because that's that's what's required. And I think you'll see the same thing. Uh, and what might happen is there might be some big plays. You know, if you play eight man up, and you you pop a crack. That's a, that's eighty. And or you know you throw it over the top. And Arkansas looked vulnerable over the top. You know some of you know so the play action pass that that alarms you. And then you know, always have weird things happen in these type games where you're so heavily favored coming off of a, you know, a, a blowout. You know, do you play as well? Do you, you know, do you make some mistakes? You know, is your kicking game as sharp? So, okay, you you asked the question, I answered it. There's the <laughs> other, there's the flip side to all of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it could be a two hour, forty five minute game, and I'd love that. Oh, I think we all would. I mean. I love college football just as much as the next guy, but some of the three and a half, four hour, even four and a half hour games that we get into nowadays is it's just ridiculous. But you talk about how you think that they're going to make KJ beat him with his arm. And obviously that makes you think of Traylon Burks. And while he hasn't had bad weeks, I don't think he's performed as well as the expectation of him coming into the year. Do you think this is a big week for Traylon? It just depends on how they play. Uh, and I thought Texas, when I say they played those safeties deep and the nickel deep, that's why. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you you can decide who you're going to take away. It's like, in, you know, we're not going to let Traylon Burks beat you. Well, well, there's other options now. So, you know, it's it's the, the yin and yang to, you know, to the schemes and the changes. And right. But this, yeah, you, you would think at some point he, he's going to have his day. And I just said it's against Texas A&M. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and, um, you know, in the other part about this game is you, you, you know, we talked about the running back depth. The, the linebacker depth is such that, you know, we may not see Grant Morgan this week. You know, he's got that dinged up knee, and he says it's not that bad, but I think he'd probably heal a little better with a week off. What do you guys think? Oh, I'm with you. I, I don't think he really needs to play. I mean, You've gotten so much productivity out of out of Henry and out of Poole and out of everybody else on that defensive side of the yeah, ball Parker, that there's I no can play. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's really no need to push it, especially with the gauntlet of games that you got up with A and M, Georgia, Ole Miss, and Auburn all in the next four weeks. He he shouldn't see the field. No, I think that's true, and uh, yeah, uh, this, but this is a this is a game where you hope that. Can take control early, and you see, you know, those young running backs rest Traylon, rest Grant Morgan. Uh, maybe you get to see uh, Malik Hornsby some too. Um, and uh, I, you know, I'd like to see a little more of Devin Bush and Hudson Clark, you know, at corner. Uh, Jay, Jayden, uh Johnson, the the, Fred, the true freshman, nickel slash corner safety. I'd like to see him get more time, and that's. You know that's what these games should be about, but you guys you got to take care of business early so that you can do that. And so the, the your frontline guys need to play well early. You know all the talk defensively for Arkansas in a positive sense would center around Jalen Catalan before the season started. I mean he is probably your most NFL ready defensive player, and I'm watching Joe Fouché just fly around the field these first two games, and you know the way his teammates view him as he was voted captain. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt. Catalan is the man as far as the secondary is concerned, and maybe overall the defense. But safety, man, I thought I think Joe Fouché has looked tremendous these first two games. Yeah, you know, I'm going to throw something at you. I, I saw I saw Joe Fouché chasing uh, receivers a couple of times, and he, you know, so he's got to make sure that he's disciplined. And that's the one thing that alarmed me about the Texas game is that. There were receivers open. Hudson Card was was just awful. I mean, he was wide right on about four deep passes where they had guys open. There was one of them dropped, should have been caught. So you, you've got some things to shore up on defense. That you know, I, I tend to think what Steve Sarkeesian said afterwards. They didn't play great. They missed some. You know, there were some plays out there that they didn't make that they'd made in the passing game the week before. So. Uh, if you're going to rush three, you've got to cover, and you've got you've got to make sure that 
you're the deepest man on the field if you're Jalen Catalan and, and Simeon Blair and Joe Fouché, you know, playing safety. So that that's something to kind of watch to see. And, and Rice missed some open passes, too. Uh, you know, they had a guy open deep. Um, and I guess they did, you know, get behind Ladarius Bishop for, for a touchdown. So that's the, to me, that's the, the one area on the defense that's got to improve. Mm. Clay, uh, before we completely move away from Texas, one thing that kind of stood out to me and stood out to a lot of people, especially of how much targeting came into play in week one against Rice, and then it felt like you almost got away with a few um, during Texas. One, do you think that you, you got away with a few, or was it the right no call, the right call? And, and do you think that it's still going to be this back and forth of what is, what isn't uh, for the rest of the year? Well, I think we know that those were targeting, that they just the officials missed them. I mean, we, we've been educated pretty well. Uh, and, Drew, I mean, I think we, we all know that when the crown of the helmet's lowered and it hits a, it's another helmet, mm-hmm. that's, that's usually an ejection for, for, for two halves. And so they slipped by on that. This was a Big 12 crew that didn't call anything. And I think that, you know, when you get back to SEC play, they're, they're going to call that. And I, but I think also players are going to play, and it's just almost impossible not to do it. And it's the it's the way the game is, you know, was played. Uh, you know, maybe fifth and sixth and seventh graders that are raised under a different era, you know, where that's not the you know the, the way to play the game. You you go with your face mask first. Maybe they'll. You know, they've played it the, their whole lives. But I think it's just almost impossible to just say, no, we're not doing mm-hmm. that anymore. We're, you know, we, we've just seen it on TV growing up that we know that we go in and lower the, lower the helmet. And so I think you're going to see, you know, from time to time, you're going to see players play that way. Not just Arkansas, but, you know, throughout college football. It's that time of the year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all of the pro and college football action this season. Get all of the updated odds, props, and contests, including the online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest, the world's largest 200,000 NFL survivor contest, open now at Bet Online. Here's what you have to do head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 100% welcome bonus. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts.